uh, as you know, the great late Prime Minister Fuller had a saying, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. And it is only fitting that you won the Prime Minister Fuller challenge because of that. Uh, when did you truly realize that something else out of the textbooks and common knowledge had to be done to reward the tide of global desertification? Well, I first realized something was drastically wrong in the mid-1950s when I saw a uh, serious drought in the headwaters of one river system in Africa at the same time as the international community was collecting money for flood victims lower down the same river and it didn't make sense that the drought could be a flood and so I began to question almost everything I'd been taught. Great. Um, you also have a strong belief in the inability of politicians to affect real change or govern in any capacity for that matter. Uh, what in your opinion is the most surefire way of affecting policy at local and governmental level? for these issues? Yes, that's, that's not just my opinion. I'm just going by the research. As a politician, I led a political party. I was president of the party, and I could not lead at all. And I was defeated frequently. I had not read the research of people like Lord Eric Ashby, who researched Britain and America over the last 200 years to see how new knowledge, which is what leadership entails, gets into society. And it cannot until the public opinion changes, then they can lead. Okay. And uh, would you share with us one instance where you managed to overcome such a case and successfully change policy? Never. <laughs> there isn't a case in history. I cannot find any case in history where any government or institution or university or farming organization has been able to adopt truly new thinking ahead of public opinion. Um, you also mentioned that we should not wait for government to take action and that solution must come from the people, especially by local hubs. Uh, in your experience, which kind of hubs fare better? Your average local farmer families and people who migrated from cities or mixed groups of farmers plus scientists, academics, local authorities? Well, Is we, there such a distinction at all? Yes, because of the research and history looking at that, the leadership can only come from ordinary people now and so that's why at our institute we are pursuing a strategy of encouraging locally developed locally led and managed hubs where everybody can collaborate be they from universities government agencies farmers pastoralists everybody can begin to collaborate about that. managing holistically okay. um, you also emphasize the importance of building communities and you have quite a lot of experience uh, from your past. Uh, what would you say are the most important aspects of building a strong community and the most common pitfalls you have encountered or observed? Well, the, the most needed thing is trust and, and people trusting each other. Most people are good. Most people are trying to do the right thing. There was a systemic, simple reason why we're so many people trying to do the right thing, we were constantly seeing unintended consequences. And um, so gradually we've been learning how to bring communities together, mobilize them um, so that they emerge as their own projects, their own ideas, their own culture, but just give them the little bit of knowledge that's needed to make it successful. Just a little push yourself. Uh, now, uh, as in all things, there will always be critics in all of these. Um, uh, most of your critics and skeptics of your model sometimes state that your findings have little peer-reviewed support. Uh, I was in your presentation yesterday, actually, and a lady asked, can you give us proof that your system works? And we know that you have achieved tremendous results in all parts of the globe, changing lives of families and communities and restoring thousands of acres of otherwise dead or dying land. But uh, especially scientific people and people in the scientific community, uh, they want solid data, it seems. It's something they can make sense of, like the amount of bundled nitrogen in soil or uh, increase in vegetation per square meter. Does uh, Seri Institute have a database of chronological improvement in the lands you manage, for that matter, to share with the scientific yes, community? Yes, there, there are um, no criticisms I'm aware of of the work we do. The criticisms are of what people think it is. Yes, yes. 
and uh, we welcome criticism. That's only through criticism that science and everything can advance. What we're doing is based 100% on using all available science in management, but dealing with it in a way that addresses social, cultural, economic, environmental complexity. Now what we're encouraging, because uh, so many who are trained in reductionist uh, narrow silos of knowledge can't comprehend that. We are encouraging all researchers we can, and many people are collaborating with us from universities, from big NGOs, etc., to gather as much data as they need about the social effects, the economic effects, when people manage holistically. Because the sooner as they do manage holistically and truly do so, we see amazing change economically, socially, environmentally, and we just need a lot of documentation of it uh, to convince the doubters. Yes, which we will do. You also believe that uh, agriculture should be based on biosciences as opposed to our current model, which is dominated by chemical industry, uh, with its practice of monoculture, chemical fertilizers, GMO trials, mass feeding operations, correcting water courses, and all the usual suspects. Uh, which, in your opinion, contributes the most in degrading topsoil quality or desertification? Uh, the desertification is because the rainfall, the available rainfall, becomes less effective. Okay, that happens because of bare soil between plants, mainly in grasslands of the world that are erratic uh, environment, and the only things that cause a high percentage of bare soil worldwide in any environment on, on the land are uh, overgrazing plants. You cannot overgraze land and that happens because too few animals are on the land too long. It happens because of the use of fire and that's it. And the only other thing that does it is resting the land, conserving to let nature take its course in these seasonal environments leads to chemical breakdown of plant material instead of biological. So it's very, very simple. Um, and your solution of uh, mimicking nature by carefully planning movements of large herds of livestock had tremendous results. Uh, does holistic management incorporate any other aspects and practices of biomimicry? It, um, yes, it does, because when, when you're looking at, whether you're looking at croplands or grasslands, or whether we're managing forests uh, holistically or fisheries holistically, all of it, we are essentially trying to mimic nature as closely as we can because nature got it right over millions of years. And when we finally get it right, we find we are mimicking nature. Right. And for our last questions, it's a little long one, so bear with me. Uh, the late uh, Masanobu Fukuya mentions that science rarely looks to microorganisms for an understanding of large causal relationships, and uh, he argues that the perishing of vegetation may have triggered a drought, but the plants may have died as a result of action of some microorganisms. And uh, as you know, botanists do not bother with microorganisms as these lie outside of their field of interest. Uh, here we see the problem you emphasize about uh, specialization in one field while ignoring others and trying to build a model and which would truly fail. Do you think that we need a new class of multidisciplined scientists to tackle our complex problems of climate? Uh, no, multidisciplined teams of scientists won't really help. What we have to do is, it, that's like bringing a team of horses together that have all got blinkers. One horse without blinkers can see more. Uh, what we need is to manage holistically using the science that we get from those disciplines and that's what we're doing and in the end we will find almost everything revolves around microorganisms whether they're in the gut of the animal or in the soil but the relationship between microorganisms in the soil and above is absolutely critical to human survival. Okay.